tomorrow or in two months' time. And as is the practice of parliament, you are normally given some leeway, no matter what the debate is about, you'll be given some leeway to make your maiden speech within that particular motion or debate. So there is no cause to worry. I personally did my maiden speech two months after I joined parliament, and I had more than 15 minutes. Uh, I think now we can move on. Leader for the majority party. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, it's indeed true what you say that uh, a number of members are not able to make their maiden speeches. And I'm um, really thankful that I can see the Honorable Zahir, Honorable Bandazi, and other new members in the House this early. And really, I want to encourage, especially our new members, these are the very rare opportunities you will get to make your maiden speeches, especially during these procedural motions. And I really want to encourage them to use this opportunity this morning. Honorable Speaker, uh, if you allow me to now move on, Honorable Speaker, that pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order Number 97-1, uh, this House orders that each speech in a debate on any motion, including a special motion, be limited in the following manner. A maximum of three hours with not more than 20 minutes for the mover, and 10 minutes for each other member speaking, except the leader of, of the majority party and the leader of the minority party, who shall be limited to a maximum of 15 minutes each. And that 10 minutes before the expiry of, that, of the time, the mover shall be called upon to reply, and that priority in speaking be accorded to the leader of the majority party, the leader of the minority party, and the chairperson of the relevant departmental committee in that order. Honorable Speaker, I think for the benefit of uh, our new members, uh, these procedural motions on limitation of time, Honorable Speaker, are customary uh, just to allow ourselves to have adequate time for the movers and those who are seconding them and, uh, to move second and also have some last 10 minutes to reply. And I realized, Honorable Speaker, last night, if you are here, uh, at the time I was replying on the presidential speech, I had close to 20 members asking me to donate a minute uh, and only had 10 minutes to make my reply and donate time. Uh, therefore, Honorable Speaker, it's good for even uh, all our good new members to note that uh, at the conclusion of a debate, it is indeed possible for the mover to donate a minute or two. And maybe if you are alone and you have not had a chance to contribute, I can donate uh, nine out of the 10 minutes <laughs> to you and I just beg to reply if I have nothing to say in uh, response or anybody who was a mover of a certain motion, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, again, many of our members will have at least 10 minutes uh, uh, to have their take on any motion, and uh, I want to encourage members. I know there is a lot of enthusiasm to speak at this time, at the beginning of any session of Parliament, but with time, this uh, dissipates, and I want to encourage members to please take your time. Uh, the time to make your mark in the House is not in the middle of the session. It is usually at the beginning of the session. In your maiden speech, where you will uh, speak uh, uninterrupted for the 10 minutes or so. Therefore, let me, without saying much, uh, ask our leader of minority, the Honorable Pio Wandai, uh, to second this motion. Uh, Madam Speaker, this being a, a procedural motion, uh, I won't say much. But before I second it, Madam Speaker, I want to obviously associate myself with the remarks that have been made earlier on on the enthusiasm and interest of members to make uh, maiden speeches on the floor of this House and indeed to contribute to motions. Madam Speaker, since yesterday, or yesterday but one, I've received uh, numerous complaints from a number of members uh, about logging in, pressing the button, and queuing for eternity. Uh, some of them have uh, made very interesting accounts that their positions in the screen, on the screen, I don't know how to call it, kept shifting moving from 2 to 10 to 15, 30, back to 10, and so on and so forth. 
I, I know this could be a, an issue of technology, perhaps. But Madam Speaker, you know from, from tra tradition and practice, right from the 11th Parliament, we have had a situation where uh, the Speaker uh, has, has uh, developed a, a, t uh, a practice of following the order of, uh, of requests for, for making contributions, even though, of course, from time to time he has to balance other interests, the uh, regions and so on and so forth, including even the opposite sides. But I may want to perhaps plead with you that uh, for us to, to start on the right footing, we perhaps have an opportunity to, to explain to members the criteria upon which uh, they get to be given a chance to speak on the floor of the House so that uh, there is no feeling uh, or perception that uh, there is uh, uh, some application of, uh, of unfairness and so on and so forth. So that's basically what I wanted to say because I've got a lot of complaints across, from across, from across the, 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 the divide, if I may say so, but more so from uh, my side of the coalition. Yeah, I hope that that's something that can be addressed uh, amicably uh, and without really much ado. Uh, two, of course, you know, these members uh, are anxious to be seen to be talking, and that's why they're here, really. Their constituents want to see them on the screen, want to hear their voices uh, discussing issues of national importance and issues of interest to, their, to, to them in the, in the constituencies. Uh, uh, two, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, I wish to, of course, uh, second the, mo the motion as, uh, as moved by the Honorable Chungwa. Uh, it's basically really a matter of lim limiting time for debate, which has been a matter of practice and tradition. So without uh, further ado, I second. Uh, thank you, Leader of Minority. Before I propose the question, I do agree with you that it's important for members to understand the criteria. Yes, the standard criteria uh, is that we follow the order in which one logged in. Uh, as to if, if numbers moved back and forth, uh, I think the IT team will look into that if there was a challenge. Uh, some members complained that they were in the list and, the, and then suddenly they weren't on the list and their machine went off. Others couldn't log in at all, but I think those matters will be addressed by the IT uh, department. Uh, but yes, members, we do follow the order. But yesterday being the first few days of Parliament, it was also important that if three persons from a, one region had, were, were following each other, then it's the only correct thing to do is to balance by skipping to the nearest one from a different part of the country and p different uh, political party and so on. And also just making sure that there's also a gender balance. Uh, you may have seen that... Uh, uh, maybe Martin Wanyonyi was right at the bottom, but we did jump to him because he represents a certain class. But we will get to improve as we go along. So members, I um, think we will look into that. Thank you. Um, I propose the question, which is that pass you on to the provisions of Standing Order 97-1. This House orders that each speech in a debate on any motion, including a special motion, be limited in the following manner. A maximum of three hours with not more than 20 minutes for the mover and 10 minutes for each member speaking, except the leader of majority party and the leader of minority party, who shall be limited to a maximum of 15 minutes each. And that 10 minutes before the expiry of the time um, the mover shall be called upon to reply and that priority in speaking be accorded to the leader of majority party, the leader of minority party, and the chairperson of the relevant departmental committee in that order. Can I see those who... Okay. So the mood of the house that we put the question. Okay. Honorable members, I put the question, which is that pass you on to the provisions of Standing Order 97-1. This House orders that each speech in a debate on any motion, including a special motion, be limited in the following manner. A maximum of three hours with not more than 20 minutes for the mover 
and 10 minutes for each member speaking, except the leader of majority party and the leader of minority party who shall be limited to a maximum of 15 minutes each and that 10 minutes before the expiry of the time, the mover shall be called upon to reply and that the priority in speaking be accorded to the leader of majority party, the leader of minority party, and the chairperson of the relevant departmental committee in that order. Will as many of, as of this opinion say aye? aye? And will as many as of the contrary opinion say no? The ayes have it. Order number nine, motion, appointment of members to the committee on appointments. Leader of Majority. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, maybe before I move the second motion, it's worth noting that uh, having passed that procedural motion, now the motion uh, on uh, this is uh, order number nine, Honorable Speaker, I believe now subject to those timelines. And uh, I will just move on, Honorable Speaker, to move the motion that, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 204, this House approves the appointment of the following members to the Committee on Appointments in addition to those specified under Paragraph 1. One, the Honorable Nelson Koech, MP. Two, the Honorable Rehab Washira Mukami, MP. Three, the Honorable Dido Ali Raso, MP. Four, the Honorable George Gitonga Murugara, MP. Five, the Honorable David Gikaria, MP. Six, the Honorable Ferdinand Wanyonyi, MP. Seven, the Honorable Mary Emase, MP. Eight, the Honorable Abdul Rahim Dawood, MP. Nine, the Honorable Junette Mohammed, CBS, MP. Ten, the Honorable Caleb Amisi, MP. 11, the Honorable Stephen Mule, MP. 12, the Honorable Abdi Shurie, MP. 13, is the Honorable Naisula Lesuda, MP. 14, the Honorable David Kosing, CBS, MP. And finally, number 15, the Honorable Mishim Boko, CBS, MP. Honorable Speaker, it's imperative to note that uh, this House Honorable Speaker ought to have approved this uh, committee on appointments at least within seven days on assembly of a new house. And uh, Honorable Speaker, you know the challenges we had and we were not able to do this, but uh, pursuant to the Speaker's uh, directives on the 6th, uh, in his message on the 6th of October, you remember he did indicate that we need to have this committee set up by at least 12th of October which Honorable Speaker, I believe, is today. So we are at least within time to have this committee in place, and members are aware that also His Excellency the President did convey a message to the House appoint, nominating for appointment uh, uh, certain uh, persons to the offices of Attorney General, Secretary to the Cabinet, and those who will take office as Cabinet Secretaries. But for that to happen, for them to be able to take office, Honorable Speaker, members are also aware that they must go through vetting. And the committee then that is charged with that responsibility to consider uh, these nominees for appointment as cabinet secretaries is this committee. And therefore, it's quite a, a very important committee that is set out in also in our constitution, Honorable Speaker. This is done pursuant to... Uh, under Article 152, sub Article 2, and Honorable Speaker, if you allow me to read that the President shall nominate and with the approval of the National Assembly appoint Cabinet Secretaries. Honorable Speaker, that being a constitutional obligation that has been given to this House through this committee, then none of these Cabinet Secretaries or indeed the Attorney General, the Secretary of the Cabinet will take office and transact business on behalf of the people of Kenya and the government of Kenya until and unless they are approved, uh, considered by this committee and approved <laughs> by the House. 
Honorable Speaker, because I see the leader of minority emeritus, the Honorable John Buddy, uh, in a very animated conversation with somebody behind me. <laughs> uh, let me also take this opportunity, Honorable Speaker, to thank the leadership of the minority party in the House. Because you remember, Honorable Speaker, in the 12th Parliament, we considered appointees uh, or nominees to cabinet uh, on one side of the political divide without the participation of the minority. And my hearty congratulations to the leadership of the minority in the 13th Parliament because they have been very magnanimous and exhibited very good leadership. When we met at the House Business Committee yesterday, we were able to go through the list of uh, proposed names, both from the majority party and the uh, minor majority and minority parties, and we agreed unanimously on the names that are here uh, before the House. And you will bear me witness that if you look at the names of the speaker, they are not just seasoned members of this House, uh, but members who also represent various interests uh, uh, with a very good balance, both uh, regional balance, ethnic balance. We have even considered religious balance and other interests in the country, Honorable Speaker, and to make sure that we afford the people of Kenya the opportunity uh, because these are things that we will do in a very transparent and accountable manner as a house. The people of Kenya will be able to follow us live on television um, as we vet the cabinet secretaries. And Honorable Speaker, it's also worth noting for the benefit of uh, members of the public that indeed the office of the clerk of the National Assembly has already notified the general public of the details of the state vetting and what awaits therefore is this committee to commence the necessary approval by this House. And I do want to believe, Honorable Speaker, that if there are any Kenyans out there who have memoranda, who have anything that they would want to submit to the House and the committee to consider during the vetting process, they know they have, I think, until Thursday of this week to be able to submit such memoranda. And I want to assure the country that this committee will consider all memoranda that are brought before the House, and we will be fair and just to everybody. Those who will submit memoranda we will have a fair opportunity to be heard or their memoranda to be considered, but also afford uh, those against who, uh, whose names or persons memoranda have been submitted an opportunity also to be heard and to have their say before the committee. Honorable Speaker, I don't want to belabor this because uh, I'm sure having passed the procedural motion, uh, members are also eager to contribute, but I want to encourage all of us to support this. As I said, uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's a committee that we have agreed upon between ourselves in the majority party and my colleagues in the minority. And again, let me uh, once again commend the leadership of the minority that this time round in the 13th parliament, and indeed this is the spirit we want to see going forward as His Excellency the President did beseech the House, a bipartisan approach to issues, Honorable Speaker. None of the nominees uh, who have been nominated for appointment as Cabinet Secretaries is assured of their job until the House approves. And Honorable Speaker, it is also important, even as we approve these nominees, soon we shall be changing our standing orders to have now whoever is approved as a cabinet secretary to appear before this house to answer to questions, statements, and matters that are of concern to members of the public. Therefore, let me just, even as we wish all the nominees all the best as they prepare to appear before the appointments committee, also alert them that I am certain all these members in the 13th assembly are very eager to hold them to account on their actions in public and in private. And also tell them early enough that His Excellency the President has made it clear, at least to those of us in the leadership, that he will allow Parliament to exercise our mandate without hindrance, without undue influence and interference, Honorable Speaker, we should relax when we see His Excellency the President 
uh, appear for lunch. You must always remember him and the Deputy President, uh, former members of Parliament, and it's good to be able to interact with members of Parliament. It's one of those uh, few and rare opportunities when we get the executive coming for lunch in the uh, legislature. And our speaker, we continue to welcome them. But also, we will do our work as members of parliament to oversight and offer meaningful oversight on government. And I want to invite even those of us in the minority and uh, even ourselves in the majority to exercise that oversight role and our representation role in this house without fear. I think His Excellency the President has also been emphatic that the days when you had to be coerced to take a certain political position are way behind us now. And nobody will be coerced, nobody will be intimidated to take whatever position, even in the proof of this nominee, Honorable Speaker, as we consider the, uh, the, the appointment of this uh, appointments committee. With those very many remarks, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move, and uh, I want to again appeal to all of us, even as we debate uh, the appointment of these names, Honorable Speaker, to be able to uh, contribute to this motion, Honorable Speaker. Member for Kitui Central, what is your point of order? You know, Honorable Speaker, I was studying orders do allow that when a member says point of order, he should be given a chance to uh, say what is wrong with what has been said. Honorable Speaker, I'm listening to my friend, the majority leader, Honorable Kimani Chungwa, and he's saying oversight belongs to the minority side. I think our constitution is very clear. Oversight is the work of all members of parliament. Because in this parliament, we don't have, we don't have the government in the house. So I, I would want to ask you, Honorable Speaker, to declare my friend out of order, because he's misleading Kenyans. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Leader of majority. Honorable Speaker, you know Dr. Makali Mulu is my friend, as in, he indeed says. Uh, but I think from where he's sitting, he was not listening to me. And if he was listening to me, he didn't hear what I said. Because I said I want to encourage those of you in the minority party, as I also encourage those of us in the majority party, to exercise our oversight role without fear of intimidation, without fear that anybody will coerce you, anybody will uh, come to audit your CDF on account of your position, anybody <laughs> will take you to DCIA <laughs> for the positions you take. Therefore, Honorable Makali, relax. You, you, <laughs> you have nothing to fear. But indeed, what he's saying is true, and it's just what I had said. Maybe it, it bypassed his ears that our role as members of parliament is to oversight government. And that's why I did encourage us, even as we settle down and we have the House Procedures Committee, let us hasten to amend our standing orders to ensure that these cabinet secretaries don't grow horns as soon as they are appointed. And they must know that the people who have vetted them, the people who have approved them, uh, reside in this house. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, they must be responsive to the needs and aspirations of the Kenyan people that are represented by their representatives in this house. Therefore, Honorable Speaker,